Hello everyone, my name is Nick and today I have another houseplant haul for you guys. So we're going to go over all of the plants I have collectively acquired over the last month, the month of September 2019. So I'm going to kick off today's plant haul with all of the Hoyas that I acquired this month. And the first one I'm going to share with you guys today is this gorgeous, super splashy Hoya pubicalix. As with most of my Hoya pubicalix, I don't have the exact cultivar of this plant, but I do know it is a Hoya pubicalix and it is a gorgeous one. I actually already have a few Hoya pubicalix around my home, but I was helping out one of my friends in the plant shop where I work and I was showing her all of the Hoya pubicalix that I had and this one stuck out like a sore thumb and I couldn't believe I missed it when I was going through all the boxes when I got the delivery in so of course I just kind of put that one aside and I was thinking am I really gonna bring home another Hoya pubicalix because I think this is either my fifth or sixth but the answer was yes I was gonna bring it home because it is so incredibly gorgeous and a few more Hoyas I got in that delivery because I did get a really good Hoya delivery at my work Urban Jungle I got in this Hoya Retusa uh, so this is a very funky Hoya that really doesn't even look like a Hoya very much it's very grassy ap appearing but uh, this Hoya, I already have one that I've only grown for maybe four months now, maybe not even that long, but I've had some really good luck with it, so I figured why not give this a go because these are really few and far between, and I never get them in at the shop where I work, so I had to bring one home with me. Um, these are definitely pretty underwhelming if you don't know what they are. When I've been showing people who like Hoyas at the shop, this Hoya Retusa, they haven't been quite impressed with it, but I think many of you would be like, what? That's blasphemy because many of these Hoyas are just so out there and funky and they're kind of underappreciated. So I've been really grateful to see the Hoya appreciation go up a lot lately, but this is still one that I've noticed has been kind of passed over at the shop, but of course, they're all gone at this point. I will say Hoya Retusa in my own care, I've noticed it does require a little bit more water than some of those other Hoyas, uh, probably because these leaves are so fine. Maybe it would appreciate some extra humidity. I haven't really noticed if that's a main factor in that plant yet, but I will say that it is definitely more thirsty than some of my other Hoyas. And then one more Hoya that I got in with that really good shipment that I got is this gorgeous Hoya Macrophylla variegata. In fact, I loved it so much that I got two. <laughs> Actually, if we're being real, I had gotten some six inch pots the week prior to me getting in some four inch pots, so I ended up getting a six inch pot and a four inch pot. But can you blame me? I've been seeing these go for a pretty steep price online and our price was very fair at Urban Jungle. So I figured why not get two of them because if it makes you happy, it makes you happy. So I went ahead and got two of these Hoya Macrophylla. These are very, very new to me, so I do not have any real plant tips for these. In fact, I usually like to let you guys know whenever I do these plant hauls that most of these plants are very new to me and I really do not know much about these plants as I usually do not like to speak on a plant's care until I've grown it for perhaps a full growing season or at least feel very confident that I can share with you guys the correct tips. So I don't really have that many tips for these ones right here, but I can tell from the bigger leaves that this Hoya would probably appreciate a little bit more light than some of these other ones that I am sharing with you guys. So I have one or oh, two more Hoyas to share with you guys today. I think total for this plant haul, I have 15 plants to share with you guys. So I have this really gorgeous and long Hoya Lacunosa. So I had recently got a cutting or a rooted plant of Hoya Lacunosa from our friend Mary Ann, who is an elderly lady who has a, a few greenhouses on her property. And she also gave us a few other Hoyas that I have rooting at the moment. But uh, we got in these Hoya Lacunosas at the shop and they look a little bit different than the Hoya Lacunosa that Mary gave me. So I'm not sure if this is a different cultivar or what the deal is, but I've just noticed that they do look slightly different, but the more I look at them, the more I can see the similarities as well. So perhaps the one that I got from Mary Ann was just a little bit more mature than this one here. Um, but the Hoya Lacunosa is known for the smell of the flowers. So it's the cinnamon scented wax plant. So the flowers smell like cinnamon. So this is one that I'm very looking forward to flowering if it ever does get around to that. So I've only had this one for literally a week, if not less. So I really cannot speak on whether or not this one is going to bloom for me. So crossing my fingers there wish me luck I would really love this Hoya to grow really well because it is definitely a looker and I've been really appreciative of how the flowers look and smell from what I've seen obviously I haven't gotten there myself so something I am really looking forward to and I do have one more Hoya today that is rather interesting it's one that I hadn't heard of before until my friend actually traded it to me so this is a Hoya 
Crinkles Tinkles, if I am not mistaken. So from the name, I am assuming, I haven't done any research on it, I should have before making this video, but I'm assuming that this is a cultivar that includes Hoya Crinkle 8, which is a variety of Carnosa, and the leaves do look very Carnosa-esque to me, but that is a good thing, because Hoya Carnosa is very popular for a reason, or very readily available at least, for a reason, because it's a very easy-growing Hoya. So if that Hoya, or if this Hoya is anything like a true Carnosa, then it should be easy-going, and actually when she traded it to me, I see that there's this new tendril shooting off now, so that's just started, and I can see a few leaf buds, so even though winter is approaching, I'm hoping I have some really good luck with this Hoya Crinkles Tinkles because I have really not heard about this one or seen anything about it until my friend Kate traded it to me. So really looking forward to watching this one grow. All right, next we're going to talk about all the pepperomias that I acquired this month. So as for the pepperomias, I think I kind of spoiled a few of them in my last video, my pepperomia houseplant tour where I shared with you guys my entire pepperomia collection of over 50 varieties of pepperomias which you should watch if you haven't watched it already. So this first one was featured in the last video, but this is Peperomia scandens. So Peperomia scandens variegata is a plant that I already grow that I really enjoy. It's a very easy grower for me. And I noticed that I didn't have the green version and that it's been kind of hard to find, which is silly because the variegated version has been pretty easy to find, for me at least. But the green one has been kind of one I had to track down. So when I saw that Steve's Leaves had it in stock, I went ahead and purchased it. And now I have this green one to go ahead with my variegated ones. So I've been really enjoying that. And it's thus far acclimated to my home very well and has even put off a few new leaves I can see on the top. So a really easy one so far. If it grows the same way that my Peperomia Scandens variegata grows, I should have some very good luck with this one and it should be a nice trailing plant in no time. So another one I got from Steve's Leaves is this Peperomia viridis variegata. This one had a little bit of a harder time acclimating to my home. I did lose a few of those leaves and there is a few brown on some of these leaves, but I think we're good. I think we have acclimated well enough. And one thing I really love about this plant in particular is, I don't know if the guys at Steve's Leaves noticed when they sent it to me, I, they probably did, but there's this one stem in the pot that is a little bit different variegation. So this is a different plant and there is a new shoot coming off of it at the base that does have that same variegation I can see. So when I do go ahead and repot this plant, I will probably remove this one plant and kind of keep track of it as a separate peperomia. So that's rather exciting. Thank you for the guys at Steve's Leaves for sending me this rather interesting peperomia viridis variegata. And the last one I got from Steve's Leaves that I did feature in the last video is this peperomia fuzzy mystery, which is a very, very gorgeous peperomia. I've been really wanting this one for a while, but I just never went ahead and purchased it. So I recently went ahead and bit the bullet on that and I am not regretting it because this is a rather large peperomia and it's very full. I'm loving the fuzzy red stems as well as the fuzzy green leaves. It's very fuzzy as the name would suggest as well. So uh, yeah, I've been really enjoying this one and I have no complaints and I'm really excited to watch it grow. It does remind me quite a bit of my peperomia elongata in the way that it looks and peperomia elongata has been a very easygoing pep for me. So hopefully this is the same. And I do have one more peperomia, as I said, that did not make it into the last video. So this is a peperomia quadrangularis. So I already have one of these that I did also get from Steve's Leaves last year that has been growing fine for me. It had a little bit of a rough start with some dying, back, some dieback, but it has put off some good new growth for me. But it hasn't been it's not the fullest plant, it could be fuller. So when I was at a local big box store and I saw this very full basket of Peperomia quadrangularis, I could not say no, so I did go ahead and bring it home with me. So now I have the second Peperomia quadrangularis that I'm gonna try in another window because I've been growing my current one in a west window for a little bit of time now. So I think I'm gonna experiment with growing this one like a foot or two back from a south facing window because I think in the window might be a little too much light, but we're gonna try it back just a few feet and see how that goes. So wish me luck with this guy. It's absolutely gorgeous and I really rarely see peperomias sold this large. So this is one I just could not say no to. Before we move on to the next group, I do wanna quickly share with you guys this Piper Parmatum. So Pipers are in the same family as Peperomias, but they are in a different genus. So they're in the Piperaceae family, but instead of the genus Peperomia, they fall into the genus Piper. Now, Pipers are related to like peppercorns, like the ones that we eat. So maybe the name Peperomia makes a little bit more sense now, but I don't really know too much about this plant, as I've said with most of these, but I can tell you that I've 
from my research that this is a very needy plant when it comes to humidity and water. So this is one, I literally just watered it, which is kind of why I'm holding it as it's like dripping into my hand. So I'm definitely paying a lot of attention to this and it's in a very humid area in my bedroom. So I don't know if I'm gonna have very good luck with this plant going forward, but it's starting off fine. So this is one I've typically seen cost a lot of money. It's kind of like offensive how much this little plant costs, but I have them at Urban Jungle and I'm selling them for a wee $10.99. So I think that's a very fair price if I do say so myself, because I don't know, it's a very finicky plant. I don't want someone to bring home a plant that costs over $30 and then kill it. So. I'm keeping that in mind as well. So a really gorgeous plant. It actually kind of reminds me of the Alocasia Silver Dragon that I've been seeing a lot on Instagram, but it doesn't have that price tag, at least at my shop. So moving on to prayer plants, I have, or the Meritaceae family, I have this Tenanthi Amagrete. So in my top five low light house plants, I talked about Tenanthes. Tenanthes are in the prayer plant family, but I find them to be incredibly easy which is saying a lot because if you have grown prayer plants, Calatheas, Marantas, and Stromanthes, I find to be very difficult, but for some reason, Tenanthes and I get along very, very well. So this is a Tenanthi Amagrete, so it's very uh, closely related to the Tenanthi Burley Marxii, which is probably my favorite Tenanthi if we're being real, but this one has a really stunning pattern that I've been seeing a lot more commonly in some newer cultivars of plants. So this one's been around for quite a bit, and I'm sure some of these other ones have been around for quite a bit, but they just haven't popped up on the houseplant market until recently. But this one is just so gorgeous, so I thought I would go ahead and give it a try, and thanks to my friend for actually trading it to me. So a really, really gorgeous plant right here. And then one more prayer plant I have that I'm really excited about actually is this Maranta Silver Band. This is a really gorgeous cultivar of Maranta Lucanura, which is like the same a genus of like the red vein prayer plant or the green prayer plant or the lemon prayer plant. There are so many, but this is a very different one as you can see. And I absolutely am loving this foliage pattern. I have to say it's definitely my new favorite Maranta. And this one has some flower spikes coming in. The flowers on Marantas are not necessarily the star of the show. It's definitely all about the foliage for me, at least. Usually when they flower, they just kind of spit out flowers for a week or two, and then the flower stem just kind of dries up. And it's, you know, like I said, it's all about the foliage. And as you can kind of see here, there is a gorgeous shade of purple hiding on the back of the leaves. It's kind of a little bit more faint compared to some of the other plants like Calatheas. So I've just, I really appreciate this plant. It's got such gorgeous foliage with the purple hiding on the back. And if you've been following me for a while on here, you know, any plant with colors on the back of the leaves is a friend of mine. So this Maranta Silver Band is one I'm absolutely loving. I got this one also from Steve's Leaves. I don't know if I mentioned already, but this is one I haven't really seen very commonly sold. So if you are looking for it, I would definitely recommend checking out Steve's Leaves. It's a Maranta, so I know I'm giving it a lot of humidity and a lot of moisture. And I should also be giving this distilled or filtered water because Marantas do not like fluoride or chlorine or some of the other things that are found in tap water. So if I wanna avoid getting any brown tips, I'm going to give this plant distilled or filtered water and then to avoid any brown edges I'm gonna go ahead and give this plant some very high humidity so that's why this plant is living in my bedroom among my other prayer plants that seem to do very well in there last but not least I just have the plants that don't fit into any other category for this video to share with you guys so first off I have this beautiful Apicia so Apicias are in the same family as African violets so they're Gesneriads and I've been growing apicias for only a few months now, but I found them to be very fun plants to grow, particularly because they flower and they're also pet safe. So as you see from that cat running around back there, although I do not grow specifically pet safe plants in my house because our cats don't really give us issues when it comes to that. Definitely something I am always keeping an eye out for when it comes to plants. So this Apicia capriata right here, I don't really have the cultivar on it, um, but I fell in love with the foliage pattern. So if you do know the variant or cultivar, definitely let me know because I am very curious. But I have another one right here that I recently got that I do know the cultivar on. So this one is a very common one. This is Apicia capriata silver skies. Um, most Apicias get red flowers, and the two that I'm sharing with you guys today have red flowers, but there are a few that have other color flowers. I do have one in my home that has pink flowers, and when that flowers, it's just so nice to see these red and pink colors just like shine through my home. I'm sure there are many other colors of Apicia flowers as well. 
But yeah, apicias are something I've just been recently getting into. I only, like as I said, have been growing them for maybe like four to six months besides these two. And I've purchased them very small and they've actually grown out quite a bit. I have one in particular that's grown out very, very nicely. So I'm really enjoying them and I love the pop of color that they have. These are very underrated houseplants, so I was admittedly a little nervous ordering a box of these at work, but they sold really well. I was actually quite surprised, so definitely one you should keep an eye out for. I don't think people really get the true beauty of the Apicia, so definitely one to keep an eye out for. And I also have another looker of a plant. So this is an Aglianema. This one is Aglianema Pink Moon. This is one I actually did have in stock at Urban Jungle for a little bit, but I never got my hands on it because they were in six inch pots and I never really wanted to bring home a six inch pot of a plant that I just like don't have the perfect spot for it. However, my friend Linda traded me recently this beautiful ugly name of Pink Moon, so I put it in this wonderful pot, and we actually have it growing on our toilet. So I found the perfect spot for this ugly name of Pink Moon, and it's got a very gorgeous pot. So Aglianemas are very, very easy houseplants. Sometimes the colored varieties can give you a little bit more grief than the green varieties. So if you are just getting into plants, I would definitely push you towards the green, Chinese evergreens, which is their common name, versus some of those red and pink and white varieties because they just can be a little bit more difficult. But from the abundance of green on this pink variety, I would assume it's gonna grow a little bit easier. So Aglianemas um, are really sensitive when it comes to too much water. So you can even see I have a leaf back here that's yellowing a little bit, and I probably soaked this plant a little bit too much when I watered it in. So whenever I water aglianemas, I wanna give them a light watering rather than a total saturation, which is not the case usually. Usually I am giving my plants a total saturation, but as you can see here, when I do give these plants a full saturation, I do start to find that they get a few yellow leaves in the bottom, especially if I'm watering it too much, it's gonna get quite a few yellow leaves. So I can almost see that maybe this one's starting to yellow a little bit, but I will definitely hold back on the watering going forward or take the actions necessary if this plant does not get in the better conditions, but I have it in a very well-draining mix in a plant that, in a planter that does have a drainage hole, so it should do pretty well. And then I have one last plant for you guys today. Oh, this one's a mouthful, so forgive me if I mispronounce it, but this is a Xerocisios, Xerocisios, I don't know. We're gonna say Xerocisios dangai. So it's a very, it's a mouthful of words. Um, this is a succulent, this is called Silver Dollar Vine, and it is a very gorgeous plant. I have really no experience with this plant, but I just have it growing in my succulent window, which is a south-facing window, which gets a lot of light, as you can tell from the south-facing, at least in my hemisphere, um, southern-facing light is the most intense light. So we'll see how this grows. It's definitely going to be very drought tolerant and probably will appreciate that light. But once again, I really don't have any tips for this plant because I've only had it for a few weeks. So hence why it's in my September plant haul. So if you guys have any tips for me on any of these plants, I would really love to hear. If you can't tell, I'm losing a daylight fast. So I'm gonna wrap up the video right here. So thank you guys so much for watching my September plant haul today. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.